Welcome to Ted's Kitchen. This is the first indoor episode. Um, I want to talk about what I'm making tonight. Um, distracted by the black squirrel. No, it's not just run away. So, uh, we're doing Mexican tonight, and it's going to do, uh, well, let's say it in Mexican, let's do Latin. Um, I got uncooked tortillas here, and do them a couple of ways, because we're going to have, like, some sauces and stuff, so I want to make, um, I'll, I'll do them as tortilla shells, or tortilla chips, rather, and then tortilla shells. Here, I've got, this is beautiful, this is mahi-mahi, this is, um, going to be a crusted mahi-mahi, probably with really intense spice. Uh, here I have beautiful chunks of ahi tuna. Real nice, nice fish. Very tender, very soft, and it'll be done really uh, quick, hot sear, and uh, quite rare. And it's going to be glorious. That'll be for fish tacos or fish whatevers. <laughs> Here, uh, guacamole set up. Clementines, avocado, Meyer lemons, garlic, and shallots. Garlic and shallots are in the middle because they're a crossover ingredient for the salsa, which is going to be a little bit of cilantro. This is a fuck ton of cilantro. It's too much. This is a papaya. Jalapeno, scallions, onions, and tomatoes. That's pretty much it. Chili para. Believe it or not, a little bit of curry powder. Which is, no, this is not curry powder, this is cumin. I'm going to take the filet, put it in there, more of this. This is really just a dry, a rub, right? So, like that, and then pat it all on, get it nice and coated. Nice. And then I'm just going to wrap it and let it sit until I'm ready to cook it. And then I repeat that for those other three. Uh oh, that one's not ripe. Yeah, it is. Feels like I'm playing Minecraft right now. Like avocado blocks. Like one quarter second to, to let break. Sorry, excuse me, Clementines. Still too hot. Bugger. Come on, little darling. Get settled down. Just uh, zest some of this goodness here. The guacamole needs this acidity. Um, you can use limes, you could use grapefruit, you could use oranges, you can use Meyer lemons, you can use regular lemons. But it needs the acidity to keep the avocado from turning black. Take my masher. Don't crush it too much. And obviously I didn't add my orange pieces because it destroy them. And they, I think they're going to be awesome in here. Like this. So here's our semi-burnt tortilla shells. These are for our tortilla chips. Let's get them like that. Oh, look at all that good charness down there. And cut them like this. I'm going to make them big. Why not, right? I've got a preheated oven at 350. I forget about it, right? Because they're in the oven and they're busy up top. Hmm. It smells like my neighbor's having a fire. Sounds like my neighbor's having a fire. I always have such a huge fear working with these damn things. Julienne these into like really, really fine pieces. One more. And then I'll just chop, chop. Now, green onions are nice. They're kind of spicy off the get-go, but if you're putting them in a salsa like this, 
going to be marinated, I'm going to use a vinegar and uh, something that will actually take the hit off, right? They make, they make it look really beautiful, right? So right now I've got uh, garlic, the jalapeno, there's papaya, there's onion, there's green onion, and then of course down below the base, which is your tomato. That one looks good. Look how crispy, toasty, browny that is. And they're all really nicely dehydrated, nice but still soft, and I'll just let them sit out. And then when we're ready for our salsa and guacamole, these are going to be bang on ready and damn, I probably didn't make enough. Julia Child said, always dry your meat before you cook it. Beautiful ahi tuna. And I've got pink salt that like looks like it could be like the, uh, they just dried this up and put it in here. Oh my, this is gorgeous stuff. Salt it really well. I'm going to take Really fine pepper. Fish is nice and dry. So I'm going to use a combo of oils. I'm going to use a grapeseed oil, which is really great um, hot hot oil, hot, hot cooking oil rather. Um, but I also love sunflower oil. So the combo of the two give a real nice mild flavor. But we'll put a really beautiful sear on it. And one of the reasons I've dried the fish is because now when I put this in to sear it, uh, I'm not going to get as, as extreme of a pop. Right? I'm not getting burns on my belly when I'm naked cooking or if I'm on my arms when currently I would be in real trouble here. And I'm taking the biggest pieces first, obviously. Putting them, of course, season side down. And then a real simple like I just wipe my hands and I re-season the other side in the pan. Not ready yet, just uh, This is the finished one, so I'm going to give it a quick turn here. It's been in for about two minutes. It's not too hot. So I'm going to use the same oil, but I don't want very much of it because this is a different kind of fry. Just a little bit of some cloud scent. Yeah. Just a little bit. Spread her out. In the right, well, thick ones first, obviously. Here's a different too. This is all about the heat. And it's probably all about the space too. Ooh, that's good. Yep. Yep. Oh. Yep. Oh. Yep. Alright, turn it over. Get all of it nice and blacky. Perfect. Okay, so the other side I'm sure is blackened. Oh yeah, yeah, it's blackened over. Right. I'm just gonna. We're going to give it a nice wave with our white wine. Done deal. So this tuna was done pretty rare, so here's hoping that I didn't overcook it. 